Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to this video tutorial series on implementing JWT refresh tokens. In the last video tutorial, we were creating the create access token method. And in this video tutorial, we will complete creating this method. So while creating this method, we would require some values. So the first two values that we will require is the token expiry time and the key that is going to be taken from our app settings.json file. Now, how do we access these values, which is this time here when the token is going to expire and the key here. If you have not watched the video where we created the login method in our Angular 7 application, which was used as the base application in this project. To keep it short, all I'm going to say is that we cannot directly access these values Therefore, what we did is we created a helper class called as appsettings.cs, which is responsible to go and get the values from the appsettings.json file. So we cannot or we are not going to access the values directly, but we will use the appsettings.cs file. And in our token controller, we have created a, the app settings object and using dependency injection, we are going to access the values of app settings file. Now we are using the interface options for that recommended by Microsoft. Now what we want to do here is create those two values that we need. That is for expire time when the token is going to expire and the token signature, because every time the token is created, we will sign the token with the secret key. So let's add these two values or two variables. So this is of type double because we are going to use it to set the expire time and it should be double. So therefore, the value that we are receiving is a string. We are going to convert that into double and store it inside this variable called as token expiry time. Now the second value that you see is the key, which is basically going to convert the app.secret using the system security class and encoding using the system.text encoding, convert the value of this app settings.secret. Now why is we do why we want to encrypt it? That's because we don't want to tell someone because we are going to send this key to the client in the front end. If they know what is your secret key, then they can just create their own tokens. Therefore, as mentioned in the previous video tutorial that this value that you see here is very basic. Usually people don't use these values. They use like an encrypted value, which is very lengthy. And they use that to sign their token, which is alphanumeric, encrypted, encoded. So if you are going to sign your token, don't use such basic values. Use something that cannot be understood. Okay. So now what we are going to do is that value that we are going to receive, we are going to encrypt it okay now the next thing that we want to do is we need to send to the user after the token is created we want to send the jwt token and we also want to send the role of the user because in our front end some components we want to show or hide based on the user's role if the user is a customer he can view certain components if the user is an admin then they can edit certain components correct so we need to know what's the role so this property here roles or this variable here roles will using user manager we will get the role of the user by calling the roles async method next thing that we want to do is we need to instantiate the jwt security token handler class object so we as we all know if you have used an object oriented programming language how to instantiate or create a new object so let's do that so variable token handler is equal to new JWT security token handler add the missing reference to system identity models tokens dot JWT and by doing this now this object is of type JWT security token handler it's the same process that we are following when we created the login method but here we are going to modify certain values when we are sending the response and we will no longer use this method for logging in as we all know that when the login request comes going forward 
we will direct it to this generate new token method so therefore we have to make sure that we create the token and the refresh token and send it to the user so this method will be slightly different from the login method that we previously were using so the next thing that we want to do is create our token descriptor object that's going to describe the token I can just actually copy it from the login method that we have here since we're not going to use the login method anymore but these values remain the same for describing our token so the token descriptor will hold the claims against the user like the username the user role the user id and when the user logged in to get more details about what these claims do, how we set up these claims, you can go and watch the login method video tutorial for Angular 7 application that we created, which we are using as the base application. And I have explained in detail how we created these values and how we use these values. So here, first thing that we want to do is change the username value. Since it's looking to get the value from form data, as you know in the login method this value comes from the form when the user submits the form therefore in this method here since it's private it cannot be accessed through HTTP post or HTTP get this method username value comes from the user object so let's change this This should fix this error now. Next thing after we have described our token and set the values for signing our token, we need to go ahead and create our token with the following values. So to create the token, what we are going to do is generate the token. So let's create a variable, call it new token, which will hold the value of the new token and we will call the token handler object and then dot the create token method here we have to specify the parameters that would, we would need to describe the token and it comes from the token descriptor object so we will pass it here and then our token will be created and assigned to this variable new token next thing that we want to do is encode our token so we'll call it variable encoded token and then write this token so token handler dot write token and we'll pass the token to be written in the parameters of the write token method now we have an encoded token with all the values inside the token and now we want to return this as a response to the client but here we are returning a token response model therefore we need to create a return object of type token response model so let's do that so the way we are going to return the value is by sending a new token response model object which will contain the values for all these properties over here that is the token property the expiration time property the refresh token value the roles value and the username so if we go back here we will set these values like this where the tokens value comes from the encoded token that we created the expiration times comes from the new token object dot the valid to property by calling this valid to property you will get the expiry time of the jwt token that is created now the refresh token value comes from the parameter itself because we created the refresh token and then attached it inside the parameter so we are just setting that value over here or assigning the value to this property refresh underscore token roles value comes from the roles object over here and i'm using first or default that's because in the application a user can be an admin at the same time and can also be a customer so there can be multiple roles for a user so whichever is the first or default role we will send that to assign that value to the roles object and the username the username comes from the application user object 
and dot the username okay so these values we will set the values for these properties and then return it and then those values will be assigned to this access token object and then finally we will send a 200 ok response and send the new array of object which will hold the access token and i will show you this in the browser or when we test this api using postman because first we will test the api and then use it in the client side and that's what we are going to do as we did in the previous application we will first test all the apis before we start consuming it in our application so now we can save this file and now the next thing that we want to do is we are done with the login method so whenever a request comes in where the user wants to log in where the grant type will be password we will create generate the new token and send it to the user now the user is already logged in and his token is expired and the request comes in to refresh the token which means the grant type will be refresh underscore token therefore we need to then set up the refresh token method which is created over here and here we have to now write the logic to refresh the token we will do this in the next video tutorial and we will create the refresh token method but just before i end this video tutorial if you have not watched the video tutorial for the space application where we created the login method the jwt token which is being created over here and you, as you see there are some claims that are being created this you have to make very important change in your startup class unless you add the authentication middleware and you tell your asp.net core application that you are using jwt authentication method it's not going to validate the tokens so if you have downloaded this entire project following the first video tutorial this is already set up for you so you don't have to do anything but if you are implementing this refresh token functionality in your application make sure that you have the authentication middleware for jwt token added and you have set up the values which we are using here that is the token val validation parameter we are validating the audience the issuer the sign in key and these values are being validated against the claims that are created on the token so if the claims contains the values you have to specify them here so for example i'm validating the tokens the clients user id the username correct so if i go to startup i need to make sure i validate these values over here as well okay so you have to make sure that you are validating them here in the middleware so if there is certain value that's here but not in your token controller then it will be difficult for your middleware to validate it so once again if you have not added this middleware go ahead and add the authentication middleware and you have to specifically tell that you are using authentication in the configure method once again if you have downloaded this code from following the first video tutorial this is already set up for you you don't have to do anything you just have to create the method here for create access token as we are no longer using the login method now one more important change that we want to do over here is the default time for a token when it is created so when a token is created the default time for a token to expire is five minutes many people would not know this in jwt so when even if let's say in the app settings dot json file for now i have set the token expiry time to 60 minutes if i set this time to one minute and if i keep refreshing the page and the token request comes to issue a new refresh token it is not going to issue a new refresh token but it is still going to say that the old token is still valid because the old token by default in your startup class 
here is valid for five minutes. In order to change that, to remove that five minute threshold, you have to add the following thing, which is clocks. Okay, first comma, then clocks skew is equal to time span dot zero. So you set the time span to zero. So going forward, the tokens minimum threshold expired time is now removed and it is set to zero. If you don't set this, then you have to make sure that this value here is always greater than five, like six, because for five, five minutes, it's always valid. Okay, so that should be it for this video tutorial. And if you have any other questions, please use the comment section. The code for this project is available in the DevOps repos and the link will be added in the video description. Once again, please like and subscribe my channel Tech Howdy. Thank you and goodbye.